Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my AM reading video, I suppose for Tuesday, August 23rd, 2022, is when this will go up. <laughs> Rather random day in the uh, swing of the week, I suppose, uh, but uh, technically I guess I'm getting this video out and under a week from the last one, because I'm, you know, hoping to make this AM reading video and at least one more uh, in August. And I have time <laughs> to read more stuff, hopefully. <laughs> this has, in fact, been a pretty uh, difficult week for me. Uh, right now, I am without AC again, although I expect that that problem will be fixed uh, pretty early tomorrow, you know, <laughs> hopefully uh, speaking. I have the HVAC people coming. Uh, uh, but more seriously, my cat is sick again, and that is uh, really uh, the major thing causing me, uh, you know, uh, sorus, as you'd say in uh, Yiddish uh, right now. Uh, and uh, also waiting to hear back on what next to do with that. I feel like I could kick myself uh, for my uh, mid-year freakout tag video where I was expressing my, you know, hope that uh, we were, you know, beyond the bad stuff of the spring. But anyway, uh, I guess it could be a nice time uh, for some reading, uh, although I guess I have some mixed feelings about uh, the reading uh, I have been doing. Uh, but uh, to start with, uh, as always, I will uh, turn to uh, Dorothy Parker's Complete Short Stories. I have been reading one uh, short story from this collection every AM reading video since last May. And this week I am up to The Game, which she published in 1948. It's an interesting return to the dinner party of sorts. Uh, she has used uh, parties, dinner parties, and other sorts of parties in the past to write these dashed off stories that like very briefly sort of uh, excoriate usually a female uh, member for social uh, uh, lack of grace in some way or another. Uh, but this uh, story is much longer, so it's much more complex and character driven and not just like, oh, what a, you know, <laughs> A ridiculous behavior that any woman might <laughs> take part in. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it's an interesting story. Uh, you know, there's a lot of drama, a lot of tension. Uh, we are following this uh, newlywed couple that's giving a party, and um, Dorothy Parker takes us through the heads of uh, several uh, members of this party. Uh, you know, one man is uh, bitter, thinking, well, obviously the uh, husband. Uh, got, you know, a promotion and is doing well at work because he married the boss's daughter and that sort of thing. So, you know, he makes some, you know, snipey comments about that. And then there's a, um, some women who are gossiping. This is the second marriage for the husband. The first wife uh, died in a drowning accident, which, you know, makes people arch their eyebrows, perhaps, because she was apparently a great swimmer. Uh, and so one woman at the party can't stop, like, making euphemisms or, you know, allusions of some sort to drowning, in, like, in all sorts of situations with the husband. Like, so it's, you know, it's supposed to be, I guess, you know, again, that humorous uh, commentary on uh, <laughs> lack of social graces. Uh, and then there is uh, the uh, best friend of uh, the, the dead wife, who is there and I think is playing a longer game in a way, you know, to, you know, hearken to the title even, uh, where she seems like, uh, you know, she's uh, pretty uh, chill to begin with, but uh, it seems like uh, she wants to unearth some skeletons in the closet and is making some passive-aggressive uh, comments about the nature of her friend's death, and then she uses this game, which technically wasn't her idea, it was uh, the new wife's idea. She was like, the new wife is a, like a nervous people-pleaser type of person, and then she was like, oh no, nobody's talking with each other, we have to do something. So, actually, I don't think she did think up the game, but somebody, <laughs> uh, actually, maybe it was the best friend who thought up the game, oh my. <laughs> uh, and uh, the game is like a thing of charades where there's two different teams, but I think one team gets together and uh, thought up ideas of what the other team should have to act out. And so the, the friend uh, used this to sort of uh, instill, you know, guilt and doubt about what happened. Uh, you know, there's some quotes from Hamlet about drowned Ophelia and that sort of thing. Uh, so the tension by the end uh, is uh, kind of high. So I, I thought she did this rather artfully and it held my attention. The first book I finished this week is Schmutz by Felicia Berliner. This is a relatively new release, came out a couple of weeks ago. I've talked about it in some recent videos. Anyway, this is a uh, 
Jewish literary fiction novel about a, uh, a Hasidic girl, uh, Reisel, who is uh, 18 going on 19. And she has this rather uh, scandalous secret in that she has uh, become addicted to pornography, to particularly to videos through the internet, which it's rare enough that she even has access to the internet in her community, but it turns out uh, that uh, she is uh, somebody who was really good at school and wanted to continue with school and is in college for accounting, and she got a scholarship which afforded her a computer, and then her father kind of you know, privately has internet at home due to his job. Uh, you know, this isn't something that a lot of uh, Hasidic uh, households are cool with, the internet, uh, but they privately have it going on. You know, ostensibly, Reisel has the computer to do homework, but, you know, when there's unfiltered internet, you know, when they're searching, things can happen. And she stumbles upon porn, and, you know, this is something that's really quite outside of her experience, but, uh, it, uh, you know, excites her, it arouses her, it repulses her, she has all these feelings about it, uh, and then ultimately she gets into a bunch of uh, fear that she cannot, you know, possibly start to uh, date and marry, as uh, some young women her age do, because of this addiction she has, that sort of, you know, putting a damper on uh, traditional, uh, you know, values of uh, you know, marriage and so forth. Uh, so. The story opens and she goes to this uh, therapist who's a uh, secular Jewish therapist known to be sympathetic, I think, to the Hasidic community. And she goes to the therapist to try to be cured of this addiction, which, of course, it's not that easy. <laughs> uh, and we follow her through these vignettes uh, where um, we see how this uh, addiction to porn kind of uh, changes her perspective on things, you know, that... Uh, it's uh, kind of opens her eyes to, you know, what the body can do. <laughs> like, and it opens her eyes, I guess, like, you know, as she goes through the story to other forms of individuality. And, and, and you know, part of the reason she's nervous about marriage is, uh, you know, now, <laughs> again, she's open to what the body uh, responds to. And she wants to have a, you know, a pleasurable sexual relationship. And she's not sure, you know, how to ask for that. So that's a real disconnect for her. I think this could be a challenging novel for a lot of people for a few different reasons. Uh, one of them is, is that Reisel, you know, even though I think the porn actually is uh, encouraging her to, you know, look at life differently, she doesn't have a lot of language to really uh, have a lot of self-actualization in therapy. Uh, so a lot of this is, this is not a plotty book. It's a book about a woman who can't express herself very well, so this, you know, to some people is very frustrating in a way where a character really uh, uh, can't fully express herself, uh, at least uh, to other people. It's much, very much in her head for the most part. Uh, and then, of course, there's also the whole idea of, you know, the salaciousness, you know, of uh, the schmutz, which is a Yiddish word for dirtiness, in the in the Hasidic community of uh, you, you know uh, of course uh, taking it to a community that is sort of the most anti-pornographic of uh, any community <laughs> that's out there uh, uh, so uh, I think people could have trouble with that um, although this isn't a book actually about Reisel wanting to leave her community it is a book that very much is uh, her desiring to uh, you know, make these two parts of her identity fit together. Like, you know, she can't close the Pandora's box. And there is, you know, a fair bit in here about the nature of addiction, which I thought was really well done. I mean, that was realistic about how, uh, you know, she has become addicted to secretly watching this porn and, and has difficulty, you know, getting out of it, in part because she can't talk too honestly about it with most people. Um, but she still wants to get married, she still wants to be part of the community and be with her family. There's a lot of interesting stuff here about the Hasidic community. Uh, there are some nods to uh, behavior that uh, people wouldn't think of so much as socially conservative and that her mother had a uh, private but sanctioned, community sanctioned abortion because her life was in danger from the pregnancy. And then uh, Reisel's younger brother seems to be uh, experimenting with some sort of uh, transgender identity, which uh, his siblings sort of privately, uh, you know, support, it, you know, as they can. Uh, so there's, you know, that sort of uh, aspect. Uh, 
but there's also some negative aspects uh, it, that are on display too about the Hasidic community. And I suppose it's fair to say that the traditionally positive aspects of, you know, the community getting together in loving kindness rather than in, you know, sort of spying on each other for purity culture, the loving kindness part maybe isn't there quite so much. I don't know. I myself also had some trouble with the ending. It felt uh, a little abrupt and quick, and I guess I w I'm not sure how Berliner really could have ended this uh, sort of story the way she was telling it. Uh, but I have to give her props for taking these really difficult uh, subjects, and uh, I think she really was able to, uh, a lot of times, Reisel was a really compelling narrator in, you know, that she was an individual and that everything about what she was going through it felt pretty human to me uh, and um, it's hard to talk about you know people's relationship to porn even in you know more progressive society uh, let alone uh, the Hasidic one uh, so I, I applaud Berliner for really you know trying to uh, attack uh, complex issues this way uh, it didn't completely work for me and maybe for other people but I still uh, think it was uh, ambitious. This next book I'm in the middle of for uh, Women in Translation Month. This is The Sound of Our Steps by Ronit Madelon. It was translated by Dahlia Bilou. It was, this is published by Henry Holt, which is a pretty, uh, I guess, substantial publisher in America, give or take. Uh, it was published uh, in conjunction with the Institute for the Translation of Hebrew Literature. Had to look that up. Anyway, uh, this is the second book I'm reading by Madelon this month, uh, and uh, this is a novel that I think is a somewhat autobiographical about uh, her family that grew up uh, impoverished in Israel in, uh, you know, mid-century, mid-20th century. Her family is in fact Mizrahi, which is that they are of uh, Middle Eastern descent. Uh, they uh, came from Egypt. Uh, and uh, there has been uh, prejudice uh, in Israeli society um, from the Ashkenazi Jews, the European Jews, who sort of uh, are the upper echelon in terms of, uh, you know, politics and economy and so forth, uh, versus uh, Mizrahi Jews, uh, who tended to uh, be poorer and that their culture was sort of less um, recognized, as it were. So this really does seem to be an indictment of sorts, uh, not, uh, I think, in a too dogmatic way. Uh, in fact, the thing about this novel is that it really leans heavily into stylization. Uh, one thing about the other novel I uh, picked up is that it did, you know, have vignettes, you know, that it would jump from sort of uh, situation to situation in Reisel's life. Uh, but this one not only has vignettes, but they're far less connected to each other, I think. Uh, you know, there's no, you know, linear timeline and the writing is very thick so that we're like so deep into people's heads that uh, there's not like a easily um, definable traditional narrative uh, that can draw people in like talking of uh, sort of a lack of uh, forward momentum in the plot and we're really uh, plodding along with these vignettes about uh, the character's life and the character the main character the child uh, doesn't even have a completely, uh, you know, un a recognizable name. Like some people call her Tony, but most of these vignettes call her the child. Some of these are in first person, some of them are in third person. Her mother is only called the mother. So it can be very thick. You really have to pay a lot of attention even to get anything out of this book. Uh, and I'm struggling a little bit. You know, part of me, I, I, I appreciate the writing style and I want to you know, stay with these characters and, and particularly uh, in the situation of Mizrahi Jews and occasionally some of these vignettes actually uh, do stick out to me, although it can be hard to keep them in my head because the next vignette is, can be like completely different and like in a completely different trajectory. Uh, so I'm frustrated. I feel like, you know, in terms of uh, literary fiction, this is not my favorite. I, I think I, I love character driven fiction, but I'm less taken with the hoity-toity language stuff, and particularly now, when I'm very distracted by things going on in my own life, uh, I would rather have something that's, you know, easier, maybe more escapist, that sort of thing. 
you know, if I uh, were a different sort of reader, perhaps I would be DNFing this, but I can be very stubborn. I've had this on my Goodreads TBR for years, and I had it in my head for months that I would read and review this for Women in Translation Month, so I'm being stubborn and I'm sticking with it, hoping to get something out of it, uh, and uh, I will hopefully then be uh, talking about it soon <laughs> in uh, my Women in Translation video. We shall see. And the final book I have to talk about in this video is this one here on my Libby. If you can see it, it's called Under a White Sky by Elizabeth Colbert. Or maybe Colbert, like Stephen Colbert. But anyway, this is a book that is about uh, climate change and about uh, the ways that uh, humans... Uh, mostly today are trying to combat it and what uh, that is uh, actually doing uh, in terms of its their successes and failures and uh, trying to uh, sort of uh, make the world a uh, safer place for the environment again. Anyway, uh, that was a very vague description and I will not be making it any uh, less vague because I read this book uh, for the BookTube Prize. Uh, the BookTube Prize uh, was started in 2019 by Robert at Barter Hordes. It's for members of the literary community to judge the best in literary fiction, nonfiction, and translated fiction published in the U.S. the year before. We are in the final round of four rounds of 2022. I am an official judge for the nonfiction ballot of the final round. And thus I am sworn to secrecy as I read through these books on my ballot so as not to influence other judges. But if you would like to hear more of my preliminary thoughts about this ballot, I have a video I made a couple weeks ago. I'll list down, link down below and also uh, I'll link to the BookTube Prize uh, website down below. So check it out. And that about covers it for me now. Uh, for the time being, I'm expecting to stay uh, as active as is my usual on BookTube. I do very much enjoy making this content, although I am at the moment very distracted by things going on in my life, and I suppose I should give myself the out if I need it, uh, if uh, things come up uh, that emotionally or otherwise that I have to deal with. Uh, but uh, for now, I will say that I hope to be back in the next uh, few days uh, to uh, review my two books that I have read or am reading for the uh, Women in Translation Month. So uh, stay tuned. I hope you're all that. having an easier week than I am with better regulated temperature and that you are enjoying your reading. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.